Mm. Let me just go to other direction. And I have no reason being in the hospital. Mm. We are used to the ministry of laying on of hand mm. and is plaguing us. Mm. The ministry of laying on of hands is not for the body of Christ. Yes. But that's why we are doing it. When I say things like this, they say, hey, he's talking against a particular person. I'm not against anybody. The ministry of laying on of hands is not for the body of Christ. And that's why, me, okay, let me ask you this question. Are you aware that God knows that Christians are in the hospitals now? Yes. So why is he not going there healing them by himself? Okay, are you aware that eternal life is right in them? Why they are lying in the hospital? Why is eternal life not manifested by itself? Are you aware that they are filled with the Holy Ghost? And when their body dies, Holy Ghost will come out. Their spirit comes out and they bury the body. Why is Holy Ghost not healing the body by himself? Or you think God is not aware that believers are in the hospital? Okay, what about Christians that die in accidents? Where are their angels? Where is the eternal life? Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the God life? Every generation is programmed to act by a testament. There is what is called testament or testimony. You know, we call it, we say testimony. On Sunday morning, people are called to come and give testimony. And then somebody says, praise the Lord, I bought a car. Mm. Praise the Lord, I graduated from Oxford University. Oh, I was awarded a new contract. That, those things are not our testimony. But that, those are the things defined to be testimony, and we are sharing them, enjoying, having fellowship with one another. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, all right, from verse 1, Wherefore, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellence of speech, declaring unto you the testimony of God. It is not possible for a son of God to subdue sickness without the revelation knowledge of the testimony of God. It's not the testimony we share, it is the one he shared. And he called that testimony his record concerning the Son. And he went for that to say in 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, he said, He that believeth in the Son or on the Son had the record or the testimony in himself. Because the testimony is the manifestation of the invisible life within the visible creation. And that life is not hanging in the air. That life is being embodied today by a certain persons. And the life is in you. And so when you take a crop or a seed and plant it, plant it in the earth, okay, at the right time, the seed shoots up. There's a law program within it. Now, the Bible says there is treasure in the earthen vessel. For many are not aware of the treasure. I picked my sister who visited us yesterday from the bus stop and I said, okay, let's buy um, fuel down the road. On our way to the filling station, we saw some group of believers by the roadside doing what they call crusade and then they were praying. Being led by one of the top whatever ministers. Or what, and the person was telling them, repeat after me. Everything Satan has stolen from my life. And I'm like, so we are still on here. First, that prayer tells you what has been defined to be life to them. Mm -hmm. The open Bible, they say, when Christ, who is our life? But in reality, it's not their life. Mm -hmm. Their life is money. Mm -hmm. Their life is education. Mm -hmm. Their life is building, house, land. So anyone they are unable to possess, they say, the enemy has stolen it, and they call that their life. The Bible said, he that is from above is above all. We don't have time here, but 
I want us to repeat our journey here. And I'm going to pay the bill. Alright, so we're going to fix time with um, our dear brother there to allocate another Saturday for us. I'll foot the bill. It's going to be worship and teaching. Okay? And so, because we need to swallow this. See, let's not deceive ourselves. The direction Babylon is going now is not good for anybody. Mm. No nation will be better. Mm. Nigeria wants to be like a living under bridge in America. In fact, America today is the home of all the disease and sicknesses in the world. There is no disease you will not find in that state. With all their money and all whatever they have. All manner of sicknesses and diseases. Okay? Their economy is better than Nigeria, right? But that is the aspect people see. They don't see other aspects. See, this is what we need to hear. First John, think the first John, um, Peter, first or second Peter chapter 1 verse 24, somewhere the way he said that we are born of incorruptible seed. <laughs> Being born again, not of corruptible seed. So, two seeds were mentioned there. Which one is your identity? Okay, among the two seeds mentioned, the corruptible and the incorruptible. The corruptible was man's, is man's seed, the seed of man, which your physical body is a product of. But the spirit you are is not a product of that corruptible seed. Because the day you got born again, God removed the spirit that that corruptible seed produced alongside with your physical body. And they brought into your body a new spirit that is a product of the incorruptible seed, an offspring of the immortal word of God. So every man that came out of Adam, the Bible said, came out being dead. But of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. So, spiritual birth or new birth, whichever one you choose, you choose to call it, is as real as biological birth. Is as real as biological birth. Now, when you look at the gender creation, which Adam was part of, when I say gender creation, Talking about the creation where God made certain things, male and female, and seeds were given to them to produce after their kind. Seed was also given to Adam to produce after his kind. All right. When Adam committed his high treason in Eden, he was asked to come out from Eden to this visible earth. The visible earth was never designed to be inhabited by spirits because Adam was not living in the earth. Adam was in Eden, and Eden was not situated in the earth. Adam was in the, sorry, Eden was in the visible realm of the visible earth. So when Adam sinned, Adam was told to enter the earth. The earth is a, is a home for dead spirits. It was when Adam died, he was asked, asked to come here. His spirit died in Eden. His body died outside Eden. Ninety years down the line. I want to ask you, what kept Adam's body? From the moment he died, his spirit to the time his body died. What kept Adam? Do you know that we have all accepted that physical death is inevitable? I mean the body of Christ. We are looking forward to it. And so when you say something, somebody will ask you, are you saying that we shall not die? As if dying is a game. Alright? Now it is the revelation knowledge of the testimony of God now, what includes, I don't want to talk too much, but we don't have time here. What is the testimony of God? The testimony of God is that the invisible God brought forth his visibility. Mm. Being able to bring forth his visibility is his testimony. That was why at resurrection, we saw a man that the scripture said, says embodied the fullness of deity. In the book of Hebrew, God looked at him and said, Thy throne, O God. People are arguing whether Jesus is God or not. I just laugh at them. Why would you say Jesus is not God? Even in his physical birth, it was not the seed of Adam that produced him. 
So why would he argue about his his uh, his uh, deity? Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is what? What are you? The righteousness of God. What is scepter? Rod of authority. See. The incorruptible seed is not subject to the elements of this earth. And you are a product of that incorruptible seed. We, like she said, we just need to sit down and hear these things and allow it to be programmed in our mind, in our consciousness. Because you still talk about when I was born, as I was growing up, when I was in the village. That is the record of your body. It's not your record as the spirit born of God. So even when you say things like that, no way you place it. You know, when she was sharing her testimony, all throughout the week, I couldn't talk. If I'm talking, I'll be behaving as someone that is stammering because there was growth under my teeth there. It lasted for one week, and I'm like, I have never had that experience before. To have it last for one week, to the point that I went and I bought drugs. Yeah, I took it, it didn't work. That's my wife. The guests are there. I bought drugs. It didn't work. I took the drug. It didn't work. Okay? So, I woke up yesterday morning, and I'm like, is it insulting? This stuff here is insulting my identity. All right? So, I just said, now dematerialize. Now dematerialize. Dematerialize. So I went out yesterday. During the afternoon time, I realized that my tongue was colliding with something sharp inside my mouth. So I touched it with my finger. It was very sharp. After some time, a very sharp object came out from the growth. <laughs> and immediately the growth dissolved. So when I came back, I was telling her, I said, the growth just dissolved. Because we don't even know that our body hears us. Mm, yeah. Our body hears us. You know why? In the gender creation, man was placed over that sphere, Adam. Adam was part of the gender creation. But you being the new creation, you are not subject to the gender creation. You are above the gender creation. Yeah. So there, there, we have the gender creation and the non-gender creation. Angels are non-gender creation. They don't give birth. They don't marry. They don't have, know what it means to transfer seed from male to female or female to male. They don't know that. That's why Jesus said in resurrection morning, men shall be like angels. For those who are teaching spiritual husband and spiritual wife, that's where they miss it all together. <laughs> because outside of the physical earth, there's no other place where spirits they get better. <laughs> not another place. But if you can see, trace your root. You see, for the circumcision to take place in your mind, it has to be a deliberate effort. In beholding this reality, okay, to the point where your heart begins to create mental pictures, because what you have to understand are realities outside the physical earth, but in the physical earth, words or language were used to define them. So it makes it difficult for most people to relate with these realities. They read the Bible, they can't put together what is being said, so they run back to the Old Testament where you have stories of prophets how they died and how they were born and all those tosses and all of that. You see, you don't have any business with all the things that the prophets prophesied. As a new creation. And Isaiah said, it's not your business. Ezekiel said, no. When Jesus came, Jesus ended the era by saying, the hour is coming. That's where they always talk. And now is. He closed the era of tosses the Lord. So now we are to know what God had done because all the prophets prophesied about him. And so we are not praying to hear about what God will do. The gospel is about what he has done. And you are his testimony. I used to say this. If you can deny sickness, fear in your heart, it will dematerialize. But how to deny sickness, fear in your heart is where the work is. How do I do that? You can't cast fear out. You subdue fear with knowledge. What knowledge? 
knowledge of how your spirit is, where your spirit is, what your spirit is in Christ. Have you seen your spirit before? But you say you're a spirit being. But you have not seen your spirit and you have not seen how your spirit looks like. Okay? You know, we are at Lake and I was telling them, I said, and let me say it again. You see the way Muslim guys are clean us? They can't clean me like that. Are we not praying? We are praying. Do you know that was the day they arrested Jesus? To drag him to the mountain to throw him down. The Bible said he hid himself and walked through their midst. He didn't, he didn't run. He never escaped. He hid himself. What that means was that he dematerialized his body. And his body became invisible to them. He then walked through their midst and went his way. How was he able to bring forth such technology? But we read it and we don't think it's possible. When I said that my body will not enter grace, they said, be, be careful, just take it easy, I'm going too much. <laughs> As if I'm the only one whose body will not enter. We are experiencing even in those testimonies. There were people whose body did not pass through yeah. the grave. Now, your body passing through the grave, is it a blessing? You know, the Bible will say, Omar Daba. And they'll say, it's a prayer. Amen. As if growing old is a blessing. <laughs> growing old is an effect. Of the fall of man is an expression of corruption. Mm. Nobody enjoys it. Every day you wake up, you look at your body, it's, it's, it's wrinkling. Do you enjoy it? No. But the way to stop it, this is the technology the church is to deliver to the world. Then we have to understand that there's a difference between what medical science calls heart, which circulates blood in the body. And what God called heart, which is in the spirit we are. He said, out of the heart comes for the issue of life. So, what pumps blood in your body is not your heart. Your heart is within your soul region. Where you have the imagination, the will, and the mind. Okay? Now, when we use our hearts to interface or interact with the reality of the testimony of God, which manifested in Christ, by which he became the immortal high priest over Zion. So you will smile your way home. You will smile your way home. How do you know that you have fear? You may not know that you have fear until something strikes. And then you see it rearing up. Staring up. Sister, this physical body you are looking at is not you. You are a spirit. Inside the spirit you are is eternal life. Eternal life cannot manifest on your body without the knowledge of it being documented in your heart. My son, give attention to my word. Let them not depart from your eyes. Meditate on them day and night. For they are life to those that find it and held to all their body. That's the New Testament writing there. It's a New Testament writing. Some even believe that God used sickness to punish them. God used disease to punish them. Please. I'm just going on that area. I am born of incorruptible seed. By declaring it, you bring your physical body under the prophetic climate of that spirit. To every spirit, there's an atmosphere. You know when we get out sometimes, we say this presence of God. Here. The presence of God is not it's your presence that is there. It is your presence. Because your presence is his presence. But when we come, we are expecting something. We tell ourselves, come with expectance. So what are you coming to? What are you expecting that you are not? Make sure you come before God's presence. I say, don't go into God's presence. You are the presence. He's not blaspheming. God's presence is not smoke. Right now, we have counterfeits. When we are singing, we put, you know, that smoke. And we're using it in church. The more we use it, the more we deny ourselves, all right, the opportunity to come into the knowledge of the real smoke. Because the smoke is meant to come out of your spirit and invade your body. My body is the ground where I am to experiment the ability of eternal life. 
my body is the ground, the platform designed for me to practice or manifest or express the ability of eternal life. But Jesus said, He that is from above is above all. No, we don't believe that we are from above. We believe that we are going up. Heaven is not up. Heaven is not sideways. Heaven is not down. Heaven is a state of being. And the heaven of angels is not my heaven. Okay? Angels have, they have their own heaven. I have my own heaven. The natural man has his own heaven. Heaven is a state of being. You know what God did? Let me speak the language of redemption. He translated us. But there is nothing like that too. But that's knowledge at a level. He translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. If that is a reality in our mind, why do we say we are going to heaven someday? Is it? Is it it's until we cross over. On this side, nothing good. The only thing good, the only thing we celebrate to be reality here is what we see with our eyes. But the, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, beside your body, man, what do you look like? I was telling Bros in the house, the rich man died, they carried his body and buried. Lazarus died, they buried his body. Their bodies decayed in the grave, right? Now Jesus told the story and said, he saw them talking with Papa Abraham. Who did he see? The body had decayed. But the man talking with Papa Abraham was not known in the earth. He didn't even know himself. They only know the physical body which was buried to be who they are. And so everybody, every day they feed the body, they bury the body, they clothe the body. It's until March, the spirit comes out of the body. They now realize their reality. Do we have to wait until we disembody the body? No. No. As a priest, you don't say, God bless me. Because when you say, God bless me, you are limiting it to physical things. You are the blessing of God to creation. We only say we are blessed when there is money in the bank. When there is no money, we are not blessed. So what then is blessing? What is blessing? Thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, there is a consciousness that weakens your body. There is a consciousness that creates sickness in your body. It's consciousness. It's mindset. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ. So he's telling you that the mind that was in Christ should be in you. Mind simply means understanding. What mind was in Christ? He was equal with God. If you are equal with God, why do you mention Satan in your prayer? The mind he said he was equal, though he was equal with God. That was the mind. He thought he's not able to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant that appeared in the, in the likeness of what? Man. Then God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name. The new name. We know J-E-S-U-S. But we don't know the new name. The new name is not a name. It's not name tag. It's not alphabet. His excellent, more excellent name is his present state in his resurrected reality. And the Bible says that as he is now, as he is now, this earth is the major problem where you are called woman and you have accepted it to be a, a reality. Say so you are a woman. Now, yes, it's your body experience. When you say I am a woman, place it where it belongs. My body is a female body. My body is a male body. In reality, I am a being that is neither male nor female. In reality, because if you are not, then you are not a priest in Zion. God will never ordain a woman a priest, even in Israel. It was Aaron and his sons, not Aaron and his daughters. If you, if you are not, then you are not a king. But we confess, I am a priest. Royal priesthood. Peculiar people. Yet, we have not arrived at that reality. 
it is as you walk with the consciousness of your spirit personality in the immortal reality that the elements of the earth which came into existence by the reason of the of the treason Adam committed begins to submit to you. Church people need to wake up. You see, this money we are making from people is our problem. I wish God can tell us to stop giving tithe and offering. So that pastors will sit up and start teaching reality. You just don't want to go there. If you go there, they will get angry. If you go there, they will get angry. Our eyes is so much of money. What to make from the people? Money, 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 money. Up till now, we don't know that building is not God's house. But we still tell people, let's build God's house. Come to God's house. In God's house, behave yourself. I am the house. Yes. I am the house he built by himself. And in me, he lives. In me, he dwells. In me, his being is expressed. Yes. I have the house. It's an insult on God to call a physical building the temple of God in New Testament. Mm -hmm. If you say that, they say you see, it's against us, it's against ministers. I'm not against any ministry. But we have to, we cannot be like Nigerian politicians. Mm -hmm. We can't continue behaving like Nigerian politicians and Nigerian policemen. Who we'll behave like falling angels? Where you will say truth, because, but because of material gain, you won't say truth. You know, if you tell them that they are God's house, they'll stop coming to church. We don't go to church. I am church. We go for meeting. But the name church, that church name, in the New Testament, defines where God lives. Where does he live? The name temple defines where God is in the New Testament. Where is he? Sis, you and I know that average believer say God Christ is in me, but in reality, is in the building, and that's why they go to the building. They enter God's. They enter. It's still with Old Testament mindset. They enter. Israel always converge where the the Ark of the Covenant was kept. I am the New Testament Ark. It's not pride. It's who I am. God, do me. God, do me. No. Know what he has done. I am his finished work. I am the work he built. I can never be undone. I cannot. I am already what I will ever be all through eternity. It's to be a new creation. I am discovering myself. I am not for you to become or to receive. More of you. More of what? The Bible says his fullness is in you. I say more of you. No, you don't need more of you. You need to discover yourself in his personality. Reckon you yourself to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God. And J. Gabriel will see you and salute. And then they will turn and say, see the son of God that doesn't know who he is. Because in the first creation, you were part of it. And you can't find God like in any creature that is part of the first creation. But in the new creation, they are not part of it. So we are the new creation. Who embodies the God life? Father, we thank you. Thank you. So this prayer, Father, heal me. It's a good prayer. I love it. Let's keep praying it. There's no problem. But please come to the mountain. Come and realize who you are in Christ. Come. He said, no man that outside guys will enter here and kill everybody. Chop up our head and then we'll, tomorrow we'll buy caskets and put everyone inside. I saw it on Facebook. The one they slaughtered the other day. Put everyone inside the casket and then they'll be washing up and we'll bury them. Tomorrow they'll come again. When are we going to wake up? They are the ones that will wake us up. It was unbelievers that woke the early church up. Stephen never knew that he was a mighty evangelist until they suffered severe persecution. They are the ones that will wake us up. We are sleeping. We are sleeping. You see how our fathers in faith are messing up themselves, prophesying to doom. And they are not ashamed. They keep prophesying. They prophesy for um, 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 politicians. God said, God spoke to me audibly. And at the end of the day, it will not work. And you see me talking. You will see me talking. The Bible says, the mountain of the lost house.
shall be exalted above all hills and all nations. So, the gospel in the last day is not really going about on the street doing money crime. It's discovering your, your, your beauty, your immortal beauty, yes. your immortal garment. Yes. When you discover it and you start protecting it, nations, nations are men, will they will come. Mm -hmm. We have been going to them. We have now to come into ourselves and realize who we are because we are the mountain of the lost house that has already been exalted. We have been exalted. You know how? Where are you sitting? At the right hand side. The right hand side is not the place beside God. It means God's visibility. God named you when he said, I think he was once singing and said, or oh, she, this high priest said we are he. There's some of you guys were singing now. I, I, am, he. I, am, I am he. I am he. He said, and this high priest became us. He became us. What that means is that we are the high priest because every priest in Israel must be an offspring of the high priest. Yeah. What qualifies you as a priest is that you are an offspring of the high priest. Hello, ma. The discovery of your spirit being as the spirit is in the mind of God is your glorification. Please. I am ending it here. It's not praying for me, it's paying me on the leg, it's paying me on the waist. No. It's discovering your priestly garment, the reality of your priestly garment. Do you know that before Aaron could die, God told Moses, take Aaron, he said, take Aaron, your brother, to the mountain. Remove his garment that he may die. That was all that the old covenant. You know they will tell us that when they, when he's entering into the most, most holy place, they will tie a rope. But there was never a record that the priest died inside there. Because as long as he's wearing the garment, death cannot take him. Now that was a mortal man with a mortal garment, priestly garment. You are an immortal man with an immortal priestly garment. And your priestly garment is Christ. Christ is not just a name. It's not just a name. It's glory that words cannot describe. And we are clothed. No priest move around without garment. His priestly garment. So if you are a priest, then you have your garment already. The acknowledgement of your immortal garment, okay, is the beginning of the renewing of your mind. Because the renewal of the mind simply means you start when you start taking the realities of Christ and you start personalizing it. Personalizing it. Everything you see in Christ in his resurrected reality, you personalize it. Should the Bible say he's our life? Yes. And then when I say I'm a mortal, they say you are not a mortal. But they are okay to say Christ is my life. That Christ that is your life, is he not a mortal? Yeah. It's a mortal. Mm -hmm. So you are affirming what you already are, but has not made manifest in the visible world. Please. We're ending it here. And we're going to um, book time with them again. And I believe as time goes on, we'll be booking time, you know, continuously. Maybe once a month and then twice a month. Let's go like that. This is the month of June. So we're going to talk with our dear brother, the, the management, to know when uh, they will book us for the month of July, either first week, second week, or third week, and they will make it known. Amen. Amen. We are the armies of the Lord. A city that is set on a hill. God, creatures don't make themselves. God will make, then they have to discover what God has made. That's how it it works. But the image of Adam is still in our mind. The image of Adam, the old man, the fallen man. God gave us new identity by calling us new creation. New creation means one without beginning of days. New creation.
creation mean, means one that is higher than all angels. New creation means one that is in the class of God. New creation means one that is equal with God. New creation means one that is God, visible, the visible God. Are we not body of Christ? If the head is God, will the body be man, Adam? The body must be what the head is. So we place him there and then we detach ourselves from who he is. Even when we make the confessions, it's still not real in our mind. Because if it's real, check the prayers we pray most times. Check our affirmations. Then you will see that what we say with our mouth most times are not real to us. We are just making mere confessions. I am the righteousness of God. You know what? Righteousness doesn't mean God forgave me my sins. Righteousness in the book of Hebrew was said to be the scepter. Scepter means rod of authority. So when you step into Zion, you will see the law by which every living creature in Zion operates. That law is called the scepter. And Jesus said, thy throne, God said to Jesus, your throne, O God. So your life is God, right? Because Jesus is your life. Thy throne, O God. Everything created is defined by its life. That was why the moment Adam died, he was called old man. Old man means one that is on the journey of depreciation. Adam embarked on that journey of depreciation together with the earth at the point of his fall. At the born again experience, God called you new man, not old man. So, you being new man, the beginning of your body, is not the beginning of your spirit. The age of your body is not the age of your spirit. Yeah. So it is as we come into the revelation knowledge of our age, the agelessness reality of our spirit, the newness reality of our spirit, that our body begins to manifest it. It's real. It's real. 